Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Air Speed Prime here with my next uh, Legend of Korra news update video and also my speculation going into uh, K405 Enemy at the Gates, episode 5 of Book 4 Balance. Um, so yeah, we'll start off with the news. Uh, first up, uh, The Rift Part 3. Final part of the Rift trilogy of comics is out November 5th, so that's I believe just nine days away from now. I will have a review up on my uh, channel when the book comes out. Hopefully I'll be able to get it day one, get the review up and stuff like that. So uh, definitely look out for that. That should be pretty exciting. Um, I don't know if that book is going to you know, reveal on the final page what the next series is called. Um, because as of now, you know, we haven't had a new comic announced. But we know that there are new comics coming, which I'll talk about. Uh, and another kind of uh, bit of news I'll talk about in a moment. But uh, yeah, here's the cover of the Rift Part 3. We've, we've had this for a while now, but uh, here's a look. There we go, and uh, yeah, coming out November 5th, um, but uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, other main bit of news is the, uh, that uh, Mike and Brian did a kind of a Q&A session on Avatar Wikia, and uh, yeah, there was some pretty cool stuff that they that they did. Basically what happened was that anyone in Avatar Wiki, they opened up a kind of thread, and people could post questions. Mike and Brian logged in and answered questions they wanted to, basically. Um, there's a, there's a lot of questions they answered. Uh, not all of them, I suppose, would be, would be considered kind of newsworthy. So um, you know, definitely check out check it out on Avatar Wiki. But uh, some ones I want to talk about are um, they confirmed that uh, Druk Zuko's dragon is a direct descendant of Ran and Shaw, the dragons from Avatar: The Last Airbender, that ta thought uh, Aang and Zuko the kind of true meaning of firebending and stuff like that. So uh, they didn't full. Uh, kind of full on confirm that Druk was the egg that Zuko picked up, you know, the egg that is the Sun Warrior kind of uh, ancient artifact, the Sunstone. They didn't confirm that that was Druk, but I think more or less this that's what this uh, uh, this information actually confirms that that, that is indeed um, Druk because he said Zuko said that that egg was alive, uh, it looked it was shaped like an egg, obviously, um, and um, yeah, it makes sense that it was Druk. We know dragons live a long time, so it makes sense that Druk was like somewhere around, you know, 70 years old or something like that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Other one would be that uh, probably the biggest piece of news that they gave us was that they confirmed the name of a uh, fire of the current Fire Lord uh, Zuko's daughter. Her name is Fire Lord Izumi I Z U M I. So that's a pretty cool name, and obviously it it, it passes the Fire Nation uh, test because you know, it starts with an I. It's got a Z in it works as a Fire Nation name for me. Um, and then they did kind of, I think, uh, respond to a follow-up question about, you know, who's her uh, mother? And they basically said, you know, name Fire Lord Azumi, mother, dot, uh, question mark, question mark, question mark. So they're keeping that a secret, but uh, my theory still remains that it is, in fact, May. Uh, it just makes sense. And then, you know, Izumi, I-Z-U-M-I. So Z-U for Zuko, M-I for... M-A-I maybe, so the name maybe confirms it's Zuko and May, but I'm not really sure. Um, so it would be cool if that was the case. We still, so, so as the comics may actually address more about what exactly that's about. Um, dealing with Zuko and May's relationship. Um, but yeah, they did mention that there will be more Toph this book. And now, this Q&A obviously happened before the calling aired. So um, we're not sure if that means if... Um, they were directly referring to like you see Toph in the calling or that she's going to make an appearance somewhere down the line. Now this was in response to a question about are we are we going to find out who the two fathers are of uh, Su Yin and Lin. And they basically just said that you know we'll have more Toph at some point and I think people maybe took that as being like okay Toph's maybe going to talk to Lin at some point and maybe they'll mention who the fathers are. I'm not really sure. Um, other than that, you know, there's just some other stuff they mentioned was just, like, um, they mentioned about the comics that there are two more comic series confirmed right now that they know are hap is happening. Jin Yang is going to be the writer, Team Guru Huru is going to be the artist, and, uh, yeah, it seems like, they didn't specifically say it this way, but it, it more or less confirms two more three-part comic series are coming. Um, as I said, it hasn't been announced what's coming out after, you know, the Rift, but, um, we assume it's just a direct continuation. Um, in this same response, they said that um, with regards to the Legend of Core comics, that there are none planned right now, but like, um, you know, maybe 
type thing. So it seems that even though Mike and Brian are obviously going to be taking a break uh, uh, once Korra comes to an end, that they may in fact still be kind of, I suppose, assisting on the comics because it obviously doesn't take as much work to us just assist on the comics because Gene Yang's writing them. Uh, Guru who's doing the art, and they just have to do a little bit of assistance, so maybe they'll be continuing on for a long time, and co core comics can happen as well, but um, again, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that, that's more or less all they said, and then the other thing was just that they did say that they were moving on to new projects, and that Avatar is basically over for now, you know, and the key word is obviously for now, they didn't say it's over for good, they just want a break, and they deserve it to work on other stuff, and you know, they'll come back at some point, exactly like Avatar The Last Airbender. We didn't know what was happening after Avatar The Last Airbender, everyone just assumed that the universe was over, but that's not the case. And Just now, because they did, they are leaving the, the, the franchise now for a while, but there's comics still coming out, there's going to be some merchandise coming out once the show's over. Um, for me, you know, the show really has moved on beyond just being you know, one show, it's an interesting universe, but it's just one show, to now it is two shows linked together, whole comic series, um, web comics, video games, all telling different parts of the story, it's a full-on universe now, and I can't see them just, like, right now just saying, yep, it's over for good, nothing else, um, so I, I think that it's definitely going to continue beyond just the comics that we're getting, just, it, it'll obviously just take time, um, other news, um, Legend of Korra 3DS game uh, is out tomorrow in North America, basically. Um, it seems like it's getting a physical release and an eShop release. So um, the game's going to be available digitally uh, and in stores. No UK slash Australian slash Europe date has been set. I'm hoping it's just an eShop release maybe for the game and... Like, America's the only place to get a physical release of the game. And maybe I'll still be able to get it physically. Um, digitally, I meant. Um, but I'm really not sure. Uh, right now, it's kind of like, I probably won't be able to get this game. At least for a while, until they announce uh, it for the UK. But, uh, yeah, we've got some screenshots of the game. It's basically Fire Emblem Korra style, from what I can see. It doesn't seem as good as Fire Emblem Awakening, obviously, on the 3DS. But, um... It seems like that style of a game, you know, grid-based, you know, you have a bunch of characters, um, and yeah, you just uh, go around, you fight, you kind of, you know, move your character, they can move a certain amount each turn, move them beside a character, and they can fight, and, you know, you pick your attacks, level up, and stuff like that. That seems, like, pretty cool. I love those kind of strategy RPG-type games, um, and, uh, yeah, I'd love to play it, but, uh, obviously, as I said, no UK release, but, uh, Americans will be able to play tomorrow, so that's pretty fun. Um, in regards to the story, we, we don't really know what's going on with the story, because obviously this game is called A New Era Begins. You can see the um, box art for the game here. Um, and apparently it takes place like concurrently with the Platinum Games story, but it tells a different story. So I don't really know how that works, or even if that's the case. So um, there's probably something new in this anyway. Either way, it should be interesting. Um, Probably not the best game, but I think it's it's if you like that sort of uh, strategy game, you might like it. So um, there's that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the core news I have right now. Um, so yeah, let's move to speculation on episode five, uh, which is going to air this Friday, and that is uh, called "Enemy at the Gates." We've seen one preview clip for the episode, and that is obviously. Um, Kuvira marches her army to Zaofu because we know that that's the last place in the Earth Kingdom yet to join up to the Earth Empire. And uh, basically, Batar's all ready to basically go in, you know, guns blazing effectively, even though there's no guns in the Avatar world. And, um, you know, just take Zaofu by force. But uh, Kuvira is like, you know, the eyes of the world are on us right now. We can't just do that. We're sending Bolin in. And. Uh, all the while, you know, um, Su Yin is kind of preparing for battle, pretty much. Um, her husband, Batar, wants to United Forces to come, but it's too late. Um, all set up to be a pretty action-packed episode, but um, the key thing I got from the clip was just that um, Bo Lin is finally going to, you know, I suppose we're finally going to get the reveal about why exactly did Kuvira kind of single out Bo Lin as, like, I want you on my team. And it seems right now that it's like her secret plan to take over Zhao Fu without uh, just invading it. Because 
she's very clever in this situation that she realizes that like as much as she could just go in and there invade and take it over fairly easily she she can't just do that because right now as much as the world leaders dislike what she's doing there's people out there who dislike what she's doing to the masses it appears as if she's helping the place she's brought stability back to the earth kingdom she's helped a lot of the poorer towns but um the second she starts invading a place that doesn't need her help then she starts to come across very badly and become the villain that other people are seeing her as and so that's definitely what clever the way she's kind of uh, analyzing the situation here um, because as, as we know Zhao Fu is a very kind of self-sufficient place like most people didn't even know the place existed they they have their own defense you know they have their own captain of the guards um, and they seem to be like one of the more kind of uh, well-off places in the Earth Kingdom because they never kind of dealt really with the Earth Queen like Su Yin purposefully didn't really want to deal with the Earth King so her falling didn't really have an impact on Zhao Fu and so she can't come in here and just be like you need our aid you know sign over your um, your land to us or we won't give you that aid she can't do that with Zhao Fu because they don't need her help the one thing we don't know is the exact impact of Kuvira and Batar leaving of what that did like maybe they could go down the road of like they brought like a bunch of the uh, military with them and like a bunch of the technology with them and so Zhao Fu is kind of a little bit defenseless maybe does need some help but beyond just needing military aid Zhao Fu doesn't seem like they need like humanitarian aid so um it'll definitely be interesting how that comes about um so um yeah what exactly Bolin is going to be doing here I'm not really sure obviously the the, the link here is that um Bolin is obviously dating Su Yin's daughter Opal, so she would be friendly with Bolin. Obviously, we we saw them interact a little bit. Her try to teach uh, him metal bending last book. Maybe she just sends him in as a way to kind of like deal with this peacefully or something like that. That she try and gets him to convince her to just give over the land peacefully. But at the same time, she's trying to keep Bolin under her control as well. And if she literally just tells him to go into Zhao Fu and say, like, sign over control, that's exactly what he doesn't see in Kuvira right now, that he doesn't think that that's what she's doing. So, I, I'm not really sure what's going to happen. Um, maybe she'll, like, betray Bolin, and, like, that. what they'll end up doing is that, like, they'll send him in on his own, and then she'll come in and threaten to kill Bolin unless Su Yin signs over control, and they'll use him that way, where, like kind of Bolin will be betrayed by his um, uh, kind of former boss and the choice won't be up to him but like you know he'll switch sides because of that but um, soon will have to give over control to Zhao Fu so Bolin lives or something like that. I can see something like that happen but the, at the same time I think for the strength of for the strength of Bolin's character arc this book they need to go down the road of having him realize what's wrong with Kuvira himself rather than the choice being made for him like him realize at some moment that what I'm doing here is wrong I'm on the wrong side of the situation right now and change um then you have, have questions like will Opal be there because we haven't seen her since like the first episode will Kai be there um what will the Opal's siblings do you know Wei and Wing we know they're there with Su Yin but where's Huan um and so on so that would be a that that would be very interesting to see what happens because from the trailer we do have that one clip of Su Yin Wei and Wing in like mech suits. So do they kind of steal some of Kuvira's mech suits or do they have some of their own? Either way, I think some something leads to a big fight and um, I assume Zerfu falls just because they probably will go down the road of like okay they they have complete control and their Korra comes back and needs to gain control again it's very much a, a case like i don't know how they're going to resolve this that effectively but um yeah it's it's definitely going to be interesting and then you have the whole thing in the background as well with um uh iki Genora, milo and cora on pepper obviously where, where are they going to come out like are they going to bring her straight back to tenzin and will she meet the world leaders um and like return or on the way back to Republic City or something like that, 
will they see this army invasion and Korra will be like, no, you need to get me right down there. And she jumps down and confronts, confronts Kuvira there and um, maybe stops the invasion of Zhao Fu, uh, but realizes she can't beat Kuvira right now and kind of retreats to Republic City or something. I, I can see a few different things happening because um, Kuvira and Korra have yet to meet, obviously. Um, maybe... They probably have, like, met before, like, uh, back in book three, but we probably didn't see it. Because I think they have, like, said stuff to each other or have been in the same room before, but um, I don't think they fully, like, interacted in the kind of way we were hoping. So th that's still a big thing that has to come. I assume her reuniting with Mako, Asami, Tenzin, and Ko will be a big thing. Uh, retur just retur returning to Republic City should uh, is going to happen. Um... But we do know from the trailers that Korra, at some point, wearing her, you know, Earth Kingdom uh, outfit right now, confronts Kuvira on, like, a battlefield or something like that. So, I think she may actually, like, arrive at the battle before anything massive takes place and stop something from happening. Um, and maybe the result of that leads her to kind of get her Avatar clothes, you know, the kind of Korra Book 4 design that we know. Um... But, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. And then we definitely have to return to the uh, Prince Wu and Mako stuff that was kind of in progress still. They kind of left on a cliffhanger in episode 3, but, like, they're running away from these Kavira supporters. So what's going on there? What is going to be the extent of Wu's character arc this book? Something we don't know as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, just a lot of different stuff happening. Asami has to, has to uh, meet Hiroshi. He has to come back into things. We still have to find out about what Barrack's doing with the spirit vines. Um, there's that going on as well. Um, and maybe Toph will have some scenes with her again. I don't think we'll probably see her for a while. I think she may kind of turn up out of nowhere when she does turn up again. If that happens. Um, and yeah, that's I think that's more or less all the characters kind of covered in terms of like what's happening. But uh yeah, I think it's just a matter of, like, how much happens in this episode. Like, um, what's going to be the kind of cliffhanger at the end of this episode. Um, maybe it'll be just, like, Korra will arrive. She'll be there ready to fight and that'll be the cliffhanger. Or um, some big moment with Bolin and uh, Zhao Fu will be a big uh, cliffhanger. Um, but uh, who knows? They might just do go down the road of, like, kind of Zhao Fu has fallen. The Earth Empire is complete or something like that. That... Kavira basically achieves total victory before Korra even arrives on the battlefield or something like that. That'd be nice to see, but um, uh, still, yeah, but I'm, I'm excited for the episode, definitely. It seems like the the action is really starting. The first four episodes were kind of like, these are, this is the introduction section of Book 4 Balance, and here we're getting into the real kind of meat of the story and the action really kicking off, so that should be fun, and I suppose the, the only other thing with Korra would be that, like, is she fully recovered right now? I, I still think there'll be, like, a level of rust, and maybe she has to kind of, um, kind of reacquaint herself with going into the Avatar state, reacquaint herself with, um, the power of her bending and stuff like that, so, since she hasn't done a massive amount in the past while, but, um, th that'll be interesting to see how, like, heavily they cover that, um, and, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of scenes from the trailers we still haven't seen yet. Like, the definitely the most mysterious one remains that one with uh, Korra and Mako, I think. Just outside this kind of, um, this door that the Order of White Lotus are guarding that's kind of built into the side of a mountain. Like, I don't know where that is. That seems really interesting. But, uh, yeah, that's been the video. Thanks for watching, and uh, bye.